Hi, welcome to God Undiluted, a channel where we talk all things the Word of God, going back to the basics and making Him the center of everything we talk about. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to introduce myself on this platform, to be honest with you. Like, I think I've had 20,000 goes already. <laughs> but you know what? That won't stop us from getting into the Word of the Lord. And, you know, God has put a word in my heart that I wanted to just share on this platform. Um, you know with the leadership of the holy spirit so i hope you stay right to the very end and let's learn it together let's journey together as we get into the word of the lord so i'll start by a little story right um so when god gave me this word what had been happening was i was praying and i was like you know really deep in it going like god you know help me i want to follow you help me jesus i want to carry my cross and follow you and leave everything behind you know i was deep in my prayer and I felt a strong urge to stop <laughs> and it was like I had a one-to-one -one with the Holy Spirit with God teaching me saying do you know what you're praying do you know that which you ask for you know when you're saying God I want to carry my cross and I want to follow you do you understand what you're really praying for Honestly, I just sat there and the Holy Spirit started to school me and I was bawling my eyes out and I was crying and, you know, just grateful that he loves us so much that he meets us at our point of need to teach us. But also at the same time, I received a gentle and loving correction, rebuke and restoration. And I think that, you know, when I left that place where I am now because of that word is so important. And he urged me, I felt God leading me to share this with everyone. So what was it that I kind of learned from that experience? I felt like, you know, almost like God helping me to understand that, you know, first of all, Jesus was a human being. Do you know that? Jesus was God who came into this world and he respected the order of this world and became flesh. He could have, you know, as God done something where he just came and, you know, was already here or whatever, right? But he obeyed even his own word that he spoke right from Genesis, that he's given men dominion on this earth. And so he came as a man. He came as a human being born of a woman. God does not disobey even his own word. He honors his word above all things. So Jesus comes as a person, as a human being born of a woman, and he had to grow. He didn't just become a man in two days, right? He took each and every stage that we took. He humbled himself to that point that he became flesh and experienced that we be, which we experience. Having flesh, having blood, knowing what pain feels like. And it was only after that, that he fulfilled his mission. Imagine that. Imagine that. That God was a human being. Jesus was a human being. He became flesh. So when I was praying in my <laughs> nice, cute naivety, God, I want to carry my cross and follow you. Jesus was saying, I felt every stroke. I felt every nail. I felt each and everything that was done to my physical body, to my flesh. It was painful. I felt it. My cross is painful. So when you pray, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to carry my cross and follow you. I want you to understand what you are praying. It is not glamorous. It's not a small thing. It is not about a platform. It is not about becoming a public figure. It is not about looking cute and preaching Jesus. Although there's nothing wrong with looking cute. I hope I look cute. <laughs> I do think I look cute. But the most important thing is knowing this. Being Christ-like is real. Being Christ-like is not popular. Being Christ-like is costly. And the cost for Jesus was that it led him to the cross. And he felt everything that happened at the cross. So children of God, it is my prayer. It is my prayer that as we pray to God, as we seek him out, we have a fresh revelation of what it means to be a Christian. You know, we're living in times now where the gospel or becoming a Christian or a Christian influencer has become popular. You know, you just have to go on this app, this YouTube app to see that it's glamorous. You know, we've made it our own, you know, even a certain look, a certain image of what we wear. And it's become cool to be Christian. <laughs> But it's not cool. It's not cool to follow Christ. It's not actually cool. And it's so important for us children of God, for God to help us to understand that actually the true gospel did not send Jesus 
into a palace. The true gospel did not send Jesus, you know, to a popular stage. The true gospel sent him to the cross. The true gospel was painful. Let's go to John um, chapter 6, right? Um, because this is the scriptural um, reference for some of the things that I'm going to share with, with you all that the, the Lord pressed on my heart. In John chapter 6, from this, um, you know, about uh, 48, Jesus is talking about himself. He's saying things like, Jesus was bold. <laughs> he was saying things like, I'm the bread of life. Imagine this, right? Really imagine this. Like, let's bring it to context. He's a human being, right? On this earth, imagine if you were back then and living in those times. And someone who is a human like you is saying, I'm the bread of life. He's saying things like if you go from, you know, like from um, actually like, you know, from like I said, from verse 48 right down to verse 58. He's saying so many different things. He's saying he's the bread of life. He's saying that people should eat of his flesh um, and drink his blood. Bro, this is <laughs> imagine if you were a human being at that time. You can see the reactions that he was controversial. Right. Jesus, when he was really speaking the gospel, offended he offended people. They were like, how dare you say that? We know this guy. We know where he was born. And now he's telling us that we were going to one day eat his flesh, drink his blood. Who the heck does he think he is? Right? But Jesus stood firm. He was unapologetic for the mission that God had put on his heart. He knew his mission. He knew that which God had called him to do. And he was tunnel visioned. You know, even as we continue to read, I'm going to go back to um, this, um, the verse 60, but I feel like the Lord is leading me to go to chapter 7 right now, right, from um, verse 1 right up into 6. You know, there's a little kind of story there. If you could maybe read that, that would be really, really helpful. Whereby, actually, the Word of God is telling us here that even Jesus' brothers did not believe him. Jesus did not want to go to um, a festival that was going to be in Judea because he knew that they were looking for him to kill him. He knew that. So he wasn't going to go. Or at least he wasn't going to tell people around him that he was going because he ended up going in secret. But listen to what the brothers say to him. They say, no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. Right? Go to Judea. This is from John chapter 7 right and G in, in verse 2 and jesus said my time is not yet here for you any time will do right so you can imagine that even people who he called brothers people who were called jesus's brothers did not believe him and wanted to send him to a place or lure him to a place of destruction child of god if you are seeking to become a public figure you risk being lured to the place of destruction in that quest Jesus was not seeking to be a public figure. The Bible really clearly says here, right, in verse 4, chapter 7, verse 4, that the brothers were saying, no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. So child of God, maybe you are like me, who was praying, God, I want to follow you, I want to serve you. God, you know, I'm ready to pick up my cross. Know this. It's so important for you to have your heart right for the reason why you want to serve God. If you want to serve God because you want to become a public figure, you will be led and lured to destruction, even by people around you. It was Jesus' brothers, not his enemies, right? That's just an extra thing that the Holy Spirit asked me to just drop in there. But coming back to chapter 6 in verse 60, I want you to really pay attention to this. This is for us believers. It says, on hearing it, so this is how Jesus was calling himself the bread of life, that people are going to drink of his blood and all of these things, right? And on verse, after, on verse 60, it says, in, on hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Key word there, his disciples, the people who were saying this. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 60, on hearing this, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Right? So it means that disciples were already people following Jesus. It means that they were like you and me. It means that they had started to follow Jesus. And even then, when Jesus was now speaking the true gospel, they were like, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? So you'll find that we're living in a time now 
where when a church is preaching the true gospel of Jesus, of obedience, of walking in righteousness, it will be like to many Christians, this is a hard teaching and they will leave church. They will go away from church, seeking a church where their ears can be tickled, seeking a church or a place where they will hear motivational interviewing and leave the church feeling pumped. We're living in that generation. We're living in that time. So child of God, it is my prayer that we will not become like those disciples who ended up leaving Jesus. Because if you continue reading, it says that aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Jesus was a boss, right? Jesus was like, he was, he's not the sweet, gentle lamb that people make him out to be. Jesus was fierce. Jesus was about his father's business. Jesus was Lord. Do you understand? So he actually said to them, does this offend you? Does this offend you? Right? That's in um, chapter 6, verse 60 of John. Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascended to where he was before? You're offended by this. What if you really see a lot more? And Jesus says to them, you know what? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they're full of the Spirit and life. Yet some of you do not believe. And then if you go to verse 66, it says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Wow. What a wow. The true gospel is hard pills to swallow. It is not cute. It convicts. It pierces. It really causes a transformation of heart. It causes repentance. If the word of God is not causing you repentance, it's important to check in with yourself to see, are you receiving the true gospel? Are you receiving the gospel that Jesus died for us to have? You know, as God was now revealing more and more to me what it meant or what my little cute prayer, my ill-informed cute prayer really meant, I began to weep and I said, this can only be done by the Spirit. To really become a child of God, to really follow Christ, only the Spirit of God, only the Holy Spirit can cause somebody to have the revelation, the true revelation of Jesus crucified and say, I will follow. But I know I cannot follow in my own strength. I can only follow as the Spirit of God leads me. And then it sends our prayers to places like, God, I will not go where you've not gone before me. I will not go where you've not sent me. I'm not going to look for a mission to look cute. Because now what I know is this. Jesus, following you is costly. Following you is not cute. Following you is not glamorous. Following you is not a million followers. Follow on, on YouTube or on whatever platform we're on. Following you means dying to self daily. It's dying. It's dying to self. Dying to the flesh. And raising up every day in the spirit. <laughs> but remember, we're living sacrifices. Right? We're living. We're not dead. We're living. We have been given free will. So many a times we want to crawl off the altar. If we're going to be sacrificed because it's painful, it's easy to pick up your stuff and go. Like, no, 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 I'm not up for this. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I'm just a, you know, a beginner. This is like intermediate level. I'm out. So it takes the help of the Holy Spirit to every day, sometimes even more than once, to die to self. To say, Jesus, I lay my life. I lay my life for yours. So now when you say, pick up your cross and follow me, I understand that, but I know that it is not by my own power, my own strength. It is by the Spirit of God. So cultivate a relationship with the Spirit in me. Help me not to make your gospel profitable to my image or to myself, but to be prepared, to be prepared that true fellowship for Christ, towards Christ, is costly. Right? We know that in verse, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Jesus was responding to his brothers and said, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. So Jesus was saying to his brothers, Listen, you are not under any threat because the world, the world doesn't have to hate you. 
because you're non-threatening to the world. But for me, my mission is to let the world know that actually it is evil and it is perishing. And if you do not accept that I've been sent of God to be the lamb, to be the sacrifice, and you believe in me and you receive me, right, that you're going to perish. People were not ready for that gospel. People were not ready for the true gospel, right? And Jesus said the world hated him as a result. I'm not saying that being a true Christian means that you go out there picking a fight and being crazy and, you know, all sorts. No. It means you pray the prayer that, God, may I die as you raise in my life. May I, in, may I decrease as you increase. Search me and know my heart and see if there's any wickedness in me and change my heart. These are the prayers that David prayed. Yes, he was a man like us and he was sinning some, in so many different ways. But what was unique about David was his heart was running after God. His heart was searching and chasing after God. He knew the power of the Spirit of God. Like, do not take your spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart if you will, if you must. But do not take your spirit from me. So it is my prayer, children of God, that as we are entering this new season, because we are in a new season, if you're a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you, you know that we are in a season. Something is shifting. Something is changing in our world. People are either going to be hot for God or cold for God. There's not going to be any in-betweens. God is calling people to stand firm. Pick, pick a position. Are you for God or are you for Baal? Who are you for? Gone are going to be the days where we have a little bit of both. You have enough of God in you to fit in to the things of the Lord and have a nice life, a cute Sunday service situation going on, right? But enough of the world to fit in with the things of the world, right? To be politically correct, to, yeah, to be a nice, cute Christian. A time is coming and a time is now where God is saying, I want my army. I want people who are really saying, I am ready to pick up my cross and follow you. And understand that it means this. And I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 from the Amplified Version. It says, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciples, he must deny himself. Which means to set aside selfish interests and take up his cross. Expressing a willingness to endure, right? To endure whatever may come and follow me. And following me means believing in me right really getting to that place where you conform to his example to his example conforming to the example of jesus in living and in suffering if need be right perhaps even dying because of faith so you can see why i say that i was challenged and i had to really repent and weep before god because i knew not what i was asking Many a times we pray prayers where, you know, we are, let me speak for myself, you know, my prayer life is, an, is, is, I thank God for prayer. Prayer is such a gift. There are times, you know, when I'm just kind of praying in the tone that I'm speaking to you right now, just really, really hearing myself, hearing every word. And then there are times when I'm, I mean, I'm African, so I know how to fire prayer, fire prayer, <laughs> right? And sometimes I'm speaking in tongues. And it was during the fire prayer, fire prayer. I was like, God, you know, I want to follow you, my cross. And God had to slow me down and really speak to me like this. Because sometimes we need to hear what we are saying. We need to really digest and process that which we are saying. Don't pray empty prayers. Don't pray loud, empty prayers and not really connect with what you are saying. Be in tune with the Holy Spirit that when he needs to stop you and say, no, 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 no. You don't know what you're praying. Don't make yourself feel so good because you've prayed what you, you know. It, honestly, the rebuke was loving, but so important. Like the Holy Spirit was really saying to me that this is for you. you you're feeling good because you're praying prayers that make you feel like, oh, this is a righteous prayer. It wasn't intentional. But it's the deep things of the heart that we had to excavate. And say, stop. Stop that little girl. Stop. Sit down. I want to talk to you. I want to teach you. When you say, I want to carry my cross and follow you, this is what it truly means. It's surrender. It's sacrifice. It is costly. 
and I want to teach you. Your heart is pure. Your heart is soft. Your heart desires the right thing. But you know not what you ask of. So I'm so thankful that he gave me in that moment a revelation of Jesus. A revel when I say a revelation of Jesus, but I mean just a fresh understanding that he was a human being who was going through the most. He felt every blow and he brought me to tears to say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you went through for me. I'm grateful that in this day and age, I'm not required to be bruised and hurt in that way. What I'm required to do is to die to my flesh. Help me even when I'm praying and serving you to not be serving the flesh. Because the flesh is sneaky. The flesh can make you think you're doing things for God when they're for you. So now my prayer has changed to God. I want to do things with you. If you're not leading, I'm not going. Because you send and lead. You're such an amazing God that you send and lead. Where else do you know of a God, of a mighty king who says, not only do I send you, but I lead you. I lead you beside the still waters. I want to shepherd you as you go where I've sent you. Because I know that there will be crooked paths. Because I know that there will be mountains that you cannot level on your own. But when I'm with you, when I'm leading, when I'm before you, I will make those paths straight. So now my prayer was different. That Jesus, help me. Help me to carry the cross. Not, I want to carry the cross and follow you. No. It is now, Jesus, help me by the power of the Holy Spirit to die to self daily. Jesus, help me by the power of the Holy Spirit to understand your word. Jesus, help me by the power of your Holy Spirit to please you. Because I cannot. Does that make a difference? Does that, does, can you see the difference? Does that make sense? So, child of God, it is my prayer for you that you go with him. Because he walked this path. He knows this path. Don't think that it's about you. It's not about you. It is about Jesus being glorified. How is Jesus glorified? When we die to self and we let our lives represent him. And representing him is not cute. So if you've been called to a position of leadership, if your desire is to make the world know of Jesus, if your desire, desire is to become a true gospel uh, disciple of Jesus, if your desire is to make disciples, make sure you're being discipled by him first. Let him lead your life. I hope that this word has blessed you. I will put the scriptural references again in text um, attached to this video. Um, this is really awkward for me to say, but you know what? If you, I'm not even going to say please subscribe. I will say if you are led to subscribe to this channel and you are ready to really move with God and hear his word undiluted, then this is the place for you. And I hope you join our tribe. Amen.